Good Wednesday evening. We want to welcome you to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. And if you don't have a church to attend or you are looking for a church to attend, I want to invite you to come be with us in any or all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching at 11. Amen. Sunday nights at 6. Wednesday nights at 7. Not tonight, but normally on Wednesday nights at 7. I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. But uh, hey, come be with us if you don't have a home church. We'd love to see you. We're located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. We have an FM transmitter for those that are too sick to come inside or disabled to where they can't come inside. All they got to do is drive their vehicle to the church, sit in the parking lot, tune their radio to 92.9 FM and be able to hear what's going on inside the church house. If you'd ever like to correspond by mail with us, you can send that mail to 275 Toast Road, Mount Airy, North Carolina, 27030. I want to go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and I trust you'll pray with us. Listen, it's so good to have you with us this Wednesday evening, or whenever it is you're viewing. Thank you so much for viewing. We will go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to help us. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to pray. Thank you that you're a prayer answering God. And Father, I pray you'd help us right now that we might ever lift you up, glorify your precious holy name. I pray that you might get glory and honor out of this service, Lord. I pray for those that's sick in body, you'd raise them up physically. I pray for these that's had loved ones pass away. Lord, I pray for all of our missionaries, God, to bless each and every one of them, especially for the Brent, Rochester, and all of his family. Lord, I pray tonight, God, I pray that, God, you'd just help us as we look at your word. I pray for the lost, those that don't know Christ as their Savior, that today would be the day that they'd see their need for the Lord, repent of their sins, and ask Jesus to forgive them from their heart, ask them from their heart to forgive, knowing that he will. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, I pray you just bless everything that's said and done, and we'll give you glory and honor for what's accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make that announcement I need to make right now while I got it on my mind before it leaves. We normally have, usually have, a midweek service. It normally would be tonight, but uh, this week it was last night. So uh, don't come to the church tonight on this Wednesday night because we had it last night on Tuesday night. This week, due to Thanksgiving, give folk time to travel and cook and get ready for Thanksgiving. We had a Tuesday night service last night and to thank God for his many blessings. So I just wanted to mention that. And then also let me mention this. I hope and pray that every one of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. Now, we ought to be thankful every day. But I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. And I hope that we use it to do that, to be thankful. Amen. Because sure enough, the Lord's been so good to all of us, hasn't he? Well, I'll tell you what I want to do. If you've got your old church hymnal with you, you want to turn, you can. We're going to do one we can do together here. Victory in Jesus, page 120. Page 120, Victory in Jesus. I'm glad I have victory in the Lord. Aren't you? Glad I have victory in Jesus. Let's do this old hymn together this evening. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his glory Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus I say Bought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he had built for me in glory, and I heard about the stream of gold beyond. 
God the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood it made victory in Jesus thank God for that old hymn page 120 in the old church hymn I hope that was a blessing to you well, the Lord sure is good. Be taking that good old authorized King James Bible this evening and turning with us, if you would, to the book of Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, was, that's how far we've got here in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 18, we'll be down about verse number eight. And uh, we'll look at some things here in the word of God. Acts chapter 18, verse number eight. Well, as I said already, uh, we're not having service tonight as we normally do on Wednesday night. We had it on Tuesday night this week. We had it last night. So keep that in mind. And again, uh, listen, let's be extra, extra thankful. I'll be thankful every day. But let's be extra thankful every day. And uh, thank God tomorrow on our Thanksgiving holiday. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well, that's all the announcements I think I need to make right now at this time. And I uh, hope you're finding your place there in that good old authorized King James Bible, that Acts chapter 18, verse number eight. I'm gonna do one more song. I haven't done this song on the on these videos in a long time, but it seems like this is what the Lord wants us to do today. So Let's see if we can do this before we call it How Great Thou Art. I, I personally believe this is one of, if not the greatest songs of praise to the Lord that I've ever heard. I love this song, How Great Thou Art. And you know what? How great the Lord is. Amen. Think about the message in this song. I hope it'll be a blessing to you and encouragement to you this evening. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world's thy hands I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden Oh, my 
God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Amen, and he is wonderful, isn't he? Thank God, thank God, what a Savior, what a Savior. Hope you found your place there, if you are to where you can look with us in the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse number 8. Let me lay this guitar down, and we'll look into the Word of God. Acts chapter 18, verse number 8. I want to pray first. Father, help us right now as we look at your Word. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for how wonderful you are. Thank you that I can, as Brother Darrell Cox preached in our revival meeting on the Wednesday night, glad I can run to the king. Lord, I want to thank you for being so good to us. Help us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Acts chapter number 18, we got down to about verse number, through verse number 7 and 8, and I want to look at those and a few more this evening, and I think, hang on just a minute. <coughs> well, I thought I had to sneeze. I sure didn't want to sneeze in this microphone, blow y'all's heads off. You know how us nickels uh, how we sneeze, you'd be glad I turned around. Amen. In Acts chapter 18, verse number 8, Paul has been at Corinth. He's met some people, Aquila and Priscilla. He has helped them. They are fellow believers. Timothy and Silas come, and uh, Paul testifies to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. That Jesus was Christ. That's what he says in verse 5. And they oppose themselves and blaspheme. And the Bible says that Paul shook his raiment, verse 6, said of them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth. I will go into the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house. Now, he's still in Corinth. When he entered into a certain man's house, notice named Justice, verse 7 says, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. Right there next to the synagogue. And the Bible says in verse 8, And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. So some rejected the word of the Lord. That's the way it is today. Some rejected the word of the Lord, but thank God some of them got saved. The Bible says Crispus did. And the Bible says, and his house, thank God, household salvation. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. I'll tell you something. If you live for God, if, listen, if you're saved by the grace of God, I'm told about truly being born again, Holy Spirit of God living within you, you trying to live for God, you trying to love people and live for God and do right and, uh, and be faithful to God and be faithful to the house of God, God will deal with your loved ones. God will help you to be a blessing to your loved ones. God will help you to be a blessing to your spouse if your spouse is not saved. Think about that just a minute. Thank God Crispus got saved and his whole house. Praise the Lord for that. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Now, verse 9, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Verse 9, Acts chapter 18. Here's what he spoke to Paul. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. And then he said this to Paul, For I am with thee, Amen. for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. I love what the Lord told the apostle Paul. Notice, first of all, be not afraid. Listen, everybody ain't going to like me. Everybody don't like me. Somebody said recently, if somebody don't like Tommy Nichols, then I'm gonna, I don't want to be around that person. Well, I'm not worthy of that statement, but there are people that don't like me. I know that. I'm not so foolish to think that, uh, that everybody likes me. But think about this right here. Everybody ain't going to like you. But guess what? If you're doing what God wants you to do, not that anybody's perfect, but if you're trying to do what God wants you to do, this is what he told Paul, be not afraid. Be not afraid. I hope that'll help somebody today. That helps me. That helps me this evening. Be not afraid. Then he said, but speak. Don't be afraid. Keep speaking. And then he said, hold not thy peace. You, you, you tell them. You tell them. You, you keep testifying 
that Jesus is the Christ, that I'm the Christ is what the Lord is telling him, no doubt. Verse 10, he said to Paul, for I am with thee. Ain't that a blessing? For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. Amen. What a blessing that must have been to the apostle Paul. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. And then the Lord reminded Paul, for I have, I have much people in this city. I have much people in this city. <laughs> you know what that means? Thank God there's a lot of saved people in that city. In the city of Corinth, as wicked and ungodly as that place was, thank God there were many in the city of Corinth that believed in the Lord, amen, and loved the Lord and wanted to live for the Lord. And I'll read it one more time just for the sake of what a blessing that it is. Jesus said to Paul, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. Now look at verse 11. And he, who, Paul, and he continued there, where? In Corinth. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. The Lord gave him assurance that that's where God wanted him at. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God. He was there in Corinth. That's, that's from this point on, probably. So at least a year and a half. Listen, what was he doing? For a year and a half, the people of Corinth got to hear the apostle Paul teach the word of God among them. What a blessing that must have been. Now, he wasn't God. He wasn't Jesus. He didn't want people to worship him. He pointed people to the Lord. And by the way, that's what, that's what we need today. We need people that would point others to Christ, to Christ. Amen. Let's read on. And when Gallo, Gallio, verse 12, was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul brought him to the judgment seat, saying, this fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. Verse 14, and when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Paul was about to preach a little more, teach a little more, wasn't he? Gallio said of the Jews, if it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O you Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names of your law, look ye to it, you take care of it, for I will be no judge of such things, such matters. And he dragged them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of those things. God's taking care of Paul, just like he told him he would. Now look at verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there. So we really don't know how long he was there because he was there a year and six months. And then after this, it says in verse 18, and Paul after this tarried there yet a good while. A good while. You can't narrow that exactly down, and I can't either, but it was a good while, amen. And then the Bible says, and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centria, for he had a vow, a, a Jewish vow. He came to Ephesus, the Bible says in verse 19, he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Why did he reason with the Jews? Because he wanted them to get saved. He wanted his brethren to get saved. I'm going to stop there for sake of time. And uh, we'll pick back up, Lord willing, in verse number 20. Verse number 20, Lord willing, next Wednesday night. But I hope this has been a help to you this evening. Now, don't forget, no service tonight. We had it last night, this week, this week. No service Wednesday night. We had it last night on Tuesday night. And uh, let me say this too, as I'm closing, thank those of you that uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've not done that, I would encourage you to do that and you'll be notified every time a video is put on our channel. And, uh, and if they're a blessing to you, would you hit the thumbs up button, amen, on these videos? And I uh, thank you so much for viewing. Thank you so much. Many of you share these videos, help us get the gospel out. Thank you so much for that. Listen, we just want more people to hear the word of God. That's what it's all about anyway. Isn't it? Thank you so much for viewing this Wednesday evening. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving holiday tomorrow. And until next time, God bless you, my prayer.